Good morning, see you at 8.37. We're going to talk about doing the house up for a little second, right? Right, OK. Or the flats. I guess we are in London. Yeah. Or wherever you live, the cupboards. Under you know, the stairs, I think that's where, that's, you know, sort of, that's what I pay 600 quid a month to be in. <laughs> we joke, but, you know, you see, don't you, every now and then those articles yeah, that yeah, say, yeah, no. these are actual places you can rent exactly. in London. Exactly. One, one of my mates took a room, and he went, yeah, look how big the room is, till we realised, when we were moving the stuff in, there were no cupboards or drawers. <laughs> <laughs> and he had to use a pole that was about 10 foot long and pull the ceiling down. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. It was great. Brilliant. One of my mates lived in a in a loft conversion, but it was only five foot tall, so she could never stand up in her own flat. Wow. Brilliant. Wow. So we're talking about DIY in. Yeah, we're what talking. Can you do? We're talking with someone who could probably make any space a little bit better. Julia Kendall is with us from all the programmes on TV. Morning, Julia. Good morning. How are you both? Yeah, very good, thanks. Now, let me say this one. Um, you've been on TV for DIY SOS, 60 Minute Makeover, tonight with Trevor McDonald. Basically, you must be an absolute whiz. What's the inside of your house look like? Do you do it up every... <laughs> that's, I know that's a strange question. Do you do it up every six weeks? How does no, it work? No, no, I mean, I, it's difficult because I, I obviously, you know, get sort of my eye taken by different trends all the time. But, um, no, I'm all about creating a home that sort of has stands the test of time. Um, I, You know, I, I like to sort of look after the environment a little bit as well so my home is is you know it's full of things that have been with me for you know much of my life really what's your view on narrow boats oh i love a narrow boat (laughs) oh so cool i would love to do up a narrow boat actually i think that would be such a wonderful place to live actually i don't own one but i just really (laughs) wanted to and i just thought they're really hard to get looking nice yeah, good point. Well, I, I guess it's it's all about making them feel more spacious, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the problem. How do you do that? As a design person, human, how do you make <laughs> them feel like more space? Um, well, partly um, using hard surfaces is good. So if, if you have lots of texture in a room, it eats the natural daylight that's coming into the space and it also sort of closes the space down. So if you use harder um, surface materials, um, that can help to really open the space up. So things like uh, wood, tiling, for example, you know, will really help to, to make the space feel as big as possible. And obviously using a cooler colour palette as well will help. Really? I like yes. that. Yes. So, hey, um, while we've got you on, Julia, next week's, I believe, Tiling Week. Am I right? National <laughs> Tile Week, yes. It is, it is. Well, what we're trying to do is to raise awareness for how versatile and stylish tiles are because in this country, we're pretty rubbish um, at uh, really using tiles to their best. And, of course, digital printing technology has come on so much in the last few years. Um, There are some amazingly beautiful tiles out there and you can do some really creative and stunning things with them. Uh, So that's what what I'm here to talk about, really, is uh, how how wonderful they are. And, uh, yes, not used enough in this country, I think. My problem is, you always see them big tiles in bathrooms and that. Why do you never use them to play noughts and crosses? (laughs) (laughs) Well, why wouldn't you? Of course you can when you're sat in the bath. This is it. Yeah. I think, can you have, like, uh, blackboard tiles as well that you can write on or whiteboard tiles? Um, a bit more creative with your wall. <laughs> if, if you really feel the need to do that, don't you think that most people, if they actually have five minutes in the bathroom, just want to chill out a bit? <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> That's how I chill out, it's yeah. and crosses. Do you know what? My dad used to have this great style. He'd put wallpaper up and then every few weeks the corner would peel off. Yeah. And, and get bigger and bigger. I think... I and mean, I just thought, this is so stylish, my family. You know, we, we do something that no one else does. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> why, that's why tiles are a, are a good alternative, to be honest. I think everybody imagines that, you know, wallpapering is the easy option. Um, but, of course, you know, it's, it hasn't got the longevity that, you know, tiling would have, for example. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all over the tiling because once it's on the wall, it's there uh, for, for, you know, forever if you want it to be. And, um, you know, so long as you do a good job in the first place, which is actually easier than you think it is, then, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good to go. Isn't it proper art to put them up, though? No, it's not. Uh, now, again, you know, this is this is one of the misconceptions, really. You do have to have a little bit of patience and you do need to hone your cutting skills. But so long as you hire in a, or borrow a professional tile cutter, if that's what's needed for the type of tile that you're putting up, um, and you get your levels right, um, which was my first ever DIY disaster that I had when I was very, very young. Um, I, I did my kitchen tiling when I was a, 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 a wee child, really. I was only uh, 
yeah, 19. And um, yeah, I didn't get my levels right and it looked awful. But, you know, assuming that you, you just pay five minutes attention at the beginning of the job, then no, it's really not that hard to do at all. How many women tylers are there? I right. don't know the answer to that question. No. <laughs> Thankfully, so, though. Sorry, that was an open ended. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> <laughs> so, the nearest five, please. Yeah, okay. Julia. Oh, no, all right. I mean, <laughs> how many people are unemployed, Julia? I want to know this. <laughs> Mind you, look, thank you. <laughs> Thankfully, there are more and more um, women in trades now, which is brilliant, um, whether it's plumbing or tiling, electricians. You know, if if, uh, if you're a lady out there thinking about taking on a trade, then uh, it's definitely time to do so. There's lots of great apprenticeships now. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great profession to have, you know, because you're always going to be busy. I mean, it's interesting, actually, the research that was undertaken for National Tile Week um, showed that three quarters of people in the UK would rather pay a professional tiler than to try it themselves, which I think is a bit of a shame, really. Really. Um, but it's interesting, it's all the millennials, um, all the youngsters that are actually taking the lead with home improvement now, probably because they haven't got any money after buying their cupboards yeah. under the stairs in London to be able to pay professional trades anyway. Julia, before we let you go, I've always wondered this with you know, people who know the insides of buildings and, and rooms and what makes them look good. Yeah. Really good. Does everyone avoid bringing you round for a dinner party? You must, <laughs> you must walk in and go, oh, ooh, ew, look at that, why would you put that there? Do you know, I'm, I'm just always uh, so grateful for anybody cooking for me that, frankly, it's, it's not an option. <laughs>